Hey, I'm Cosmo Baker. I'm, uh, I'm a guy from Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, brotherly shove, however you want to call it. Uh, DJ slash producer slash event guy slash kind of like keep my fingers in many different pies. So, I mean, Vegas has changed a lot. I mean, back when I was spinning in Vegas, it was, I was flying out every week. And I'd fly out and spin at Babies at the Hard Rock, which has turned into Body English. This is like 99, 2000. And it's every week and it's crazy. <laughs> it's a hell of a commute. And when I was going out there, it was all dance music. There was nothing at all which was hip hop. The only guys that were doing hip hop out there were, uh, I think, uh, maybe like DJ Five and War and Peace, the guys that were doing uh, whatever the name of that, that uh, website was, I can't remember. Uh, but it was completely segregated, you know? There was no crossover, and all the big main clubs were all playing dance music. It's even it's just kind of like pre the EDM moniker. You know, it would be all like pretty much like big room trance, you know? We seldom would get, you know, deep house. You'd seldom get, you know, like, you know, more like, you know, techie stuff. And it would be all like big, big room trance, like Sandstorm shit. There was a complete disparity between, between that and between like what cats on the East Coast were doing and certain cats on the West Coast in LA and, and SF, you know, kind of like the genre bending uh, DJs, uh, multi genre, or whatever you want to call it, you know, the thing that kind of eventually turned into mashup. Uh, so, yeah, there was nothing like that at all. And I mean, I remember I would just be out there playing with huge crates, four crates of records, and I'd have this my dad, my house music crate. This is my rap music crate. This is like disco and reggae and rock, and then this is like weird shit that I was into, like, I don't know, fucking trying to play like handsome boy modeling school in the club or something like that, you know, something terrible. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that I was the first DJ to really be playing, you know, across genres and whatnot, but when I was out there, I was definitely doing that. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward a few years, uh, a few years later, and then, you know, AM, obviously, who had been doing it you know, independently as well, kind of came in and the shit over on, shit all over everything, you know? And, uh, you know, really kind of changed it and everybody just saw him and saw this template and said, fucking Christ, you know, this is just kind of such a next level thing. Specifically because Vegas itself is such a transient town. It's really, there's really no locals there, you know? And a lot of locals used to come out to my, my party at Babies, but, you know, so much of it is, is pandered to people who are there for like a night or like three nights, you know, like weekend warriors. So, uh, and specifically with the, the genre bending and, and the, the, the multi mixing of different genres uh, that AM was doing at that time when it kind of hit the, the apex, uh, it's perfect because, you know, you're pleasing housewives from Arkansas that are there just want to fucking get laid and dudes from San Diego and people from Dubai and whatnot, and he's able to kind of take everything, throw it all into one mix and do it like nobody else did it, obviously, I am, you know. So uh, yeah, Vegas has changed a lot. You know, Helsinki is one of my favorite cities and I've been playing there like every year for the past like eight years. And then you go to places like Tokyo, which is just such a mind trip, you know, and people there are just so unbelievably like open on music. Um, yeah, I just got back from Brazil, you know, which was insane, just fucking energy through the roof. It's like my second time in Sao Paulo. It was just so nuts, and I was there with the do-over. Um, I traveled a lot with them, and it was during World Cup. Uh, you know, but honestly, I mean, every single city kind of takes its own particular characteristic of like a really cool party. I mean, there's a lot to be said about the way the DJ culture has progressed over the past 30 some years, you know, going through all these different phases. And, you know, DJ culture right now is basically pop culture. You know, the same way that rap music and hip hop culture turned into pop culture back in the early 2000s. Um, but I mean, one of the things I would say that maybe is not necessarily missing, uh, but one thing which has been a bit of a, a, bit of, a bit of a detriment to the culture itself is just the oversaturation of DJs, you know? And, uh, and because there's so many, um, you would think that people and DJs would feel as if they have to kind of do things to differentiate themselves from other DJs. But because there's so many, it's almost as if everybody's kind of gotten into this lockstep and, uh, and everybody just stays on the safe and the norm. I think that one of the things that I would say is missing is a little bit of the sense of danger and adventurism that, uh, you know, 
a lot of cats used to have and, and the sense of risk, you know. One of the things about Serato is that, you know, it's great and everybody, I mean, I love it and I love Serato, you know, but, you know, you have, uh, you know, 10,000 records in your, in your laptop, you know. Whereas if you're playing vinyl, you had 40 records or 60 records in your, in your crate. You know? So you were forced to use those 40 or 60, you know. And so you kind of had to really put thought into the records that you were going to bring, what were you going to play, and how are you going to play it, you know. So, you know, it's just kind of like the idea of uh, DJs really staying on their discipline and really making sure that, you know, they, they keep sharp, not just with their particular technical abilities, but, you know, their overall encompassing fact of how they're going to present music to like a, to a, a, a you know, receptive audience. Uh, so, I mean, that's one thing that I think is kind of the way that it's changed for the worse, but at the same time, you know, technology keeps advancing, you know, new sounds keep on coming out. You know, young kids are coming up from behind, you know, and they're going to take some shit up and fuck shit up, you know, and, you know, next thing you know, it's, you know, it's like the punk rock again, you know, but, you know, it's everything is, it's music, man. It just keeps on moving and keeps on changing and it's not supposed to stand still, you know. I am all over the internet. I run the internet. <laughs> I created, I invented the internet, me and Al Gore. Um, no, CosmoBaker.com, C-O-S-M-O-B-A-K-E-R.com, at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I think that's it. I mean, you don't really need to check my LinkedIn profile. So. No Pinterest. <laughs> right on. Cool, man. Thanks, man. Go.